Hi, today we are coding the change of character indicator, also called the change of pattern. This typically happens when you have a clear pattern showing higher highs and higher lows that changes at some point indicating a potential change in the trend. We can automate this detection in Python and backtest it in a full strategy. In this video, I will show you how to code this indicator in Python and you can download the code from the link in the description below so you can experiment and apply your own modifications. Also, if you have any interesting ideas to be shared, please drop a comment as this shows also your support for this channel. The first pattern we will investigate is a price going in a certain trend with a higher highs and higher lows, except for the last low value that would break below the previous low signaling break of the usual trend pattern. This is normally followed by a small retracement back to a certain support or resistance level next to this value, which is a great short entry position. The second setup that also shows a change of pattern or a change of character is when the third high is lower than the previous high, indicating that the buyers on the market are getting somehow tired and the sellers might be stepping in stronger. So we have a lower high followed by a lower low or a low value that is lower than the previous low. This is also a great opportunity to wait for a retracement to a new resistance zone and taking a short position right at this point. Obviously, in the opposite direction, everything is symmetrical. So if we are looking at a downtrend, the price can have a change of pattern and we would be waiting for a long position in this case. Now imagine the current candle is this one and we need to detect if we have a change of pattern. First, we need to detect the trend and we can do this by checking if the candles are above the moving average curve. In this example, if the uptrend is confirmed, we can look for the fractal or pivot points, the high and low pivots, and we do this for a certain number of back candles, leaving a small window of candles before the current candle to avoid a look ahead bias in our testing. There are some conditions worth mentioning here. The pivot points should follow a certain order to verify the presence of the pattern and the other conditions describe the change of pattern we are looking for. Now let's see how to write all of this in Python and verify our indicators efficiency. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. First, we're loading the data. I have a Euros dollar candlesticks with the one hour time frame data between 2003 up to 2023. Then I also used the Pandas technical analysis package to compute the RSI and the uh, moving average. So I'm using the exponential moving average length of 150. And for the RSI, I'm using the length equal 12 here. And just for the sake of simplicity for this video, I'm just slicing uh, a part of the data frame. So I'm using only 5,000 candles. You can use the whole data frame, but it's going to take more time for the computation part. The first thing we have to do is to detect the trend using the moving average. I'm using back candles 15, and this means I'm looking at 15 consecutive candles before the current candle to check if they are all situated above or below the moving average curve. So in case all these 15 candles are above the moving average curve, we are in an uptrend. And in the opposite case, where we have 15 back candles below the uh, moving average curve, in this case, we consider we are in a downtrend. So the signal is either equal to one for a downtrend, two for an uptrend, three for none of these, if the price is going up and below. And we are storing this signal as a new column in our data frame called EMA signal. The second function I'm using is a function called is pivot. It's going to detect if a current candle or a candle with a certain index is a pivot point. Is it a pivot high or a pivot low? If it's a pivot high, the function will be returning one because it's a high pivot. What comes after is usually a downtrend. And if it's a pivot low, so we are expecting an uptrend after the uh, this pivot, then we return to or the function returns to in any other case. So if the current candle is neither a pivot high nor a pivot low, we return zero. And this indicator or the results of this function are also stored in the data frame as a new column, which is called is pivot. It's also important to note the uh, window equal five parameter here that I'm using in this function because it takes the current candles index, but also a window. The window is how many candles are we looking before and after the current candle to just determine if it's a pivot high or low. So we're comparing the candle to its five neighbors before and five neighbors after to determine if it's a pivot high or pivot low or none of these. And we can visualize all of these using the um, these two functions. So I'm just creating new points around the pivots, putting these points in um, 
a new column in our data frame. And just taking a small slice of the data frame and visualizing these, we can see those purple points, which are the pivot points or the pivot candles. So we have a pivot high, a pivot low, and so on. And we can see that the code is working properly. The functions are working well. We have our pivot highs. We have our pivot lows. I'm very satisfied with what I'm seeing here. Now we can move on to the next step. Okay, now we have to define a new function where all the magic happens, meaning where we detect these change of characters. So we need to detect the trend, the higher highs, higher lows, and how the, uh, the price is breaking out of this pattern. As we described at the beginning of this video, we need, first of all, to um, provide the index of the current candle, but also we need to define the number of back candles and a window that we will not operate within just to avoid the look ahead bias. And the way we will use these um, slicing parameters is that we're going to take a slice of the data frame where um, the candle minus the back candles minus the window is the first parameter up to the candle minus window. So we're taking this slice of the data frame related to the current candle that we need to test if it's a candle preceded by a break of the pattern or preceded by a change of character. So going back to our presentation, this is what we are doing. We're taking this slice, which is just before the candle of interest. So if this is our candle, we're slicing the gap window and the number of back candles. And we're going to check only for the highs and the lows in this area. So the highs are going to be selected from the local data frame now from our sliced window. And these are all the candles where the is pivot is equal to one. And we're only taking the tail with the last three highs. We don't need more. We need just the last three highs. Same thing, we are recording the indexes of these highs because remember the order in which the highs and the lows are uh, arranged is very important to determine the pattern and the break of pattern. Then we have the lows. We're detecting the lows where the pivot is equal to two, the pivot parameter or the pivot signal. And we're also taking the last three values or the last lows. In this line, we are recording the indexes of the lows. And we're going to use these highs, the indexes and the lows and the indexes of the lows to detect the pattern. So the pattern goes this way. First of all, we need to test if we have three highs and three lows. These are the minimum needed points or pivot points to um, form the pattern. And the order condition, the first condition we need to respect is the following. If we have the first low coming before the uh, first high, and then is followed by another low, and then another high, and then another low, and then another high. So we need this condition to be correct. Then we have another condition that we need to add. The first condition makes sure that we have a low, then a high, then low, then a high, and so on. So the second condition is more related to the differences between these highs and lows and the uh, higher low and the previous low and so on. So it's more on the y-axis differences. The difference between the first low and the first high should be above a certain limit. This is because we don't want those small fluctuations of the price to be confused for a pattern. So we need to filter these out. And to make sure that we are just taking high movements of the price, we're going to just put this condition that the absolute difference between the first low and the first high should be greater than the limit one value. And this is going to depend on which asset you are uh, dealing with. So for the euro US dollar, I found that this is a good value. You might want to experiment on this parameter. So that's what limit one does. The absolute value here should be above limit one. And the absolute value of the high, the first high, and then the second low should be above limit two. Notice that if we take this part here, so we have a large difference between this low and this high. However, this high and the second low, they are more squeezed, they are closer to each others. So in this case, we need a different limit that is more forgiving or less than the previous limit. So we need two limits, one for the um, uptrend movements and one for the retracement movements. And I took the second limit, which is limit two here, is equal to limit one divided by three. You might also want to experiment differently with different values for this variable. Anyway, the absolute difference between the high and the low, the second low, is above limit two. And then again, the high one minus low one should be above limit one. This is the second up movement, as we can see here. And then this movement should be above uh, limit two, as we can see right here. So for the moment, we've defined our parameters that would define the pattern we are detecting. Now we have to break out of the pattern. 
And there are two different ways that we have shown that we can break out of these patterns. The first one is a sudden drop from the higher high to a very low that would break below this higher low right here. And the second one is when we have last high that is lower than the previous high. It's like the buyers are running out of steam on the market. And then a sudden drop in the price breaks below the previous low. This is also another good opportunity. So we're going to code these two patterns to break out of the uptrend pattern. And these two patterns are defined here in these series of conditions. So now if we have the order conditions and the difference conditions, but also one of these two patterns, if pattern one or pattern two is occurring, in this case, our pattern detected parameter or variable is equal to true, we return one. In any other case, if we don't have this pattern or break of pattern detected, we return zero. This is what this whole function does. So now we can run this function on our data and store the, um, the results in a pattern detected column. Here I'm just showing you the rows where we have a signal. So we have this row, the index 376, and so on. So we can test this and visualize these signals. For example, here we have 4,779. This is the first candle for which this break of pattern is detected. Also, it's followed by 4,780, 81, 82, 83, up to 85. So we don't have to take the other candles because obviously we need to detect the signal as early as possible. Let's take the first one, 4,779 go back to our plotting cell. So I'm plotting between 4,700 up to 4,850. This is a slice. And we will try to find candle 4,779. So it should be right here. And we can see the pattern. So we have a low followed by a high, a higher low followed by a higher high, then a higher low, and then suddenly the um, followed high is lower than the previous high. So we assume that the buyers are running out of steam. And then another high that's also lower than the previous high. So we do have a detection of this pattern here. We had a small uptrend with higher highs, higher lows that was broken uh, in some sense. So we have a change of character here. Of course, we can see that this was followed by a green long candle. So it was a false signal, but the code is working properly and it's detecting those patterns just as it should. We can test this on different candles. So I'm choosing the 376. So the first row here, for example, I sliced my new data frame to 300 up to 450. And this is what we're visualizing here. So 376 should be somewhere around here. So this candle showing a probable change of pattern towards a downtrend, which is not happening. Curiously, it's happening here on this one. So we have higher low, higher high, and then a lower low breaking below this low. And then we have this one at 416 showing this uh, exact retracement where we would enter the market just as we have described in the introduction of this video. However, the detection of these patterns will highly depend on the parameters that we are using inside of our code. Remember that we have used those limit one and limit two. We have the pivot windows. We have the back candles for the detection of this pattern. We have been using a back candles parameter equal 40. We're checking the previous 40 and the window of six. You might want to experiment on these. And I also advise you to be very cautious using these limits. Don't be very strict using these limits because you will limit the number of detected signals. Before I end this video, I would like to thank all of you for your support, criticism, and the interesting ideas we've been discussing in the comments. Some of you are even sharing code snippets. Thank you for your help. I really appreciate your interest in the provided content. And that's all I had to show you for this one. I hope this information is helpful to you and you find some inspiration in the content. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.